guys. Hmm. See more of my shelf there, can't we? That's not very useful to anyone. Let's push you back. Um, oh. Yeah. Bear with, guys. Bear with. We're getting there. There. Hi. No, chopping my head off. Hi, everyone. Hello. Oh, a little bit booby, Matt. <laughs> Look at me. Matchy, matchy. Couldn't resist when I was just getting ready just now. <laughs> Basically, I've got secret pyjamas on today. I've basically got some loose baggy trousers on and this stripy top all ready to wear. And then I thought, oh, I've not got anything handmade on today. That's unusual. So I put um, my Sylvia robe on and realised I have the matching headscarf. <laughs> so, couldn't resist. Um, so, welcome everybody. Today we are making the Cora top. I would have put the Cora top on, but I don't have one. They're all in the shop. Um, and uh, today I'll be joined by, not Alex, but by Rosie. I'm sure she'll be popping up online any second. Um, so Alex is very busy in the promotional stuff for our ebook, which is out tomorrow. I've been a bit quiet on social media, if those of you who follow us on social media, because we've all been very busy pre-recording stuff, prepping, all of the, this is our biggest release in two years. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes. And the day before a massive release, Alex has a lot to do. So Rosie is going to be here today answering your questions. Um, so we're making the Cora top. And I was just reading through the instructions again, just so I don't have another one of these incidents. Um, and I noticed that um, I, uh, yeah, it's, it, I think, you know, it's going to be quite an, uh, relaxing um, in terms of the speed that we can go at. So um, that's quite nice, isn't it? Um, so we're going to be here today and then back on Thursday at one o'clock. Um, if you want to get your hands on the Cora top and dress, it's a PDF pattern. It's a PDF only one. And um, the link to it is in the comments below, but I'm sure Rose will be putting a link to it up shortly as well. So we are no longer or not currently um, running any physical classes. So this is our equivalent. Um, so we don't want to kind of have a fixed amount on what you should pay and if you should pay. But if you'd like to pay us something, we have a coffee page and you can buy us a coffee at the end of this for three pounds. Thank you to all of you who have donated so far. It means a lot to us. Okie dokie. So I didn't do all my prep because I thought, actually, let's do it together. Let's do the prep together. So very limited, limited, very few things that we need for the Cora. Um, we've got uh, a pair of front interfacing, neck, um, sorry, facing pieces. We've got um, a back facing piece. Um, both of those I need to do interfacing, so I thought I could do that with you. And then um, we've got our front, which is cut on the fold. And for some reason, I've taken the back off already. So that is um, also cut on the fold. So I thought, well, let's start with doing our interfacing. I haven't switched my iron on, just a second. <laughs> Got to get the iron on. Um, whoa, oh gosh. <laughs> oh God. I've got a chair there um, and I just fell into it. May not have ever gotten out. <laughs> a little armchair. Right, okay, so I'm just going to make sure that I've got my notches on there. Yes, that is fine before I take this off. Let's see if I can lower this down so you can see my hands a bit better. There we go, what I'm doing. So that is the back. So we're going to cut some, some interfacing for that. This is the front. Now the circle on the front facing, I've not marked yet, but I thought we can do that once we've put the interfacing on. So I'm not gonna worry about that. I have cut my notches in there. So let's take that off. So this is one of the first steps anyway, doing our interfacing. So we might as well start with that and do it together. Um, here I've got some lovely soft interfacing. It reminds me, we really should um, do some, uh, buy some interfacing because we haven't, um, um, got any uh, in stock I don't think at the moment and this is so lovely this Bileen soft interfacing um, it's really really lovely someone I think just said what's this made of this is a polyester chiffon I'd say gorgeous isn't it it was one of those some of the suppliers I used to get fabric from I used to have to physically go there to their um, the fabric place um, their warehouse and choose things 
um, and you go there and a lot of times you just you just have to be it's a bit like going to somewhere like TK Maxx you've got to sift through a lot of stuff and then you find some gems and this is one of the gems that I found I can't quite remember which one it was there's a couple that I used to go to like that and then I stopped going to them because I think oh we've just ordered some more interfacing oh Rosie's on it on it like a car bonnet well done Rosie sorry um but yes yeah, so and then uh this is seeing about this one I don't think it matters about the grain I'm just going to cut that across like that um yeah but I don't know if I'll be going I guess I could go to that they are open or whether they're open to the public and they're just doing things online but they're the kind of old school rag trade fabric suppliers in London who they're sort of older guys that are running them and um they're not like online computer savvy in that way so they have tried to kind of put things up online and they never get it <laughs> never get it right you just have to go there okay right let's cut that out so i'm cutting a pair of interfacing for the front uh neck facing and a pair of interfacing for the back oh hello coco coco's just come in maybe she'll pop up and say hello um so yeah, sorry, a pair of interfaces for the front and then we've got one on the fold for the back. Sorry, I just, Coco distracted me. How were your weekends, guys? What did you all get up to? It wasn't very nice weather, was it? No. We, um, what did I do? I don't, oh yes, I did have, ja no, I didn't have Jazzy. That's right, I was doing the fence. Um... How did the fencing go? Oh, thanks, guys. Yes, the fence. Well, so it's very easy taking the fence down. So basically, it would have been like, um, I just kind of like the, the posts that the fence in, it had just been sort of slotted in with fence panel clips. So I could take it out. And I mean, literally, I started taking it out and it just disintegrated. Um, and then I could take it out fine, but I couldn't... Um, the, the, the tricky thing was... Um, putting the posts in so I took all the posts um I took all of those out and actually the old kind of pen, fence post kind of spikes they had were fine so I just needed to replace them but fortunately um my neighbor helped me with uh putting the posts in because that was quite hard because they were quite tall and I did have a mallet but even so it was just like oh banging banging the big fence posts in and then it was just a question of drilling my clips in and slotting the panel in so yeah it wasn't actually as hard as I thought, but it did take a while and probably because, you know, it was um, just me on it. And I think that um, I'm glad that I'm not doing all of it. <laughs> um, I did two panels and then I thought, well, there was two that were rotten and we had, I just had a phone call then. Um, so yeah, I basically uh, got rid of those. <laughs> got rid of those, did those and thought, I'm, I can't face doing any more. <laughs> so at the back of the garden, I'll have to show, do a little video for the back of the garden. At the back of the garden, the fence is also really bad and it had a bit of rotten trellis on it. So I basically took or ripped the trellis off, dusted it all down with like a, a brush. And then, um, um, how do you manage to cut out with your right hand? I don't know, I always cut with right-handed scissors. Don't know, very strange. I can't cut with my left hand. What's that about? Um, and yeah, so then I just put some trellises up. Um, and yeah, I'm loving my new drill. I literally sometimes, I'm sitting there the weekend with my drill being like, what can I drill? What else can I put up? <laughs> so there's nothing to drill. Nothing that I can drill without someone else holding it. So I was like, okay, no more drilling, Lisa. But yeah, I was excited yesterday because we were having a Lisa Comfort Home Day yesterday and a bit of ebook preparation day, making lots of videos and things that we pre-record and uh, at the end of the day, we sort of, Molly and I were done, and I was like, I suddenly got my drill out, and she's like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I thought I'd do a bit of drilling. I've just noticed something I could do. So, I did. Okay, guys. So, I'm going to um, iron that again, because that is, um, it's my back facing that has come a little bit creased. Now, the fabrics that I, uh, the fabric I'm using, by the way, is one of the fabrics that I bought in specially for this. I bought in three a kind of pink viscosey floral kind of quite graphic -y floral i got a uh this one which is like kind of lovely kind of orangey reds and pinks and teal 
quite tropical. Um, and this is a crepe. And then I got another crepe that was mustardy. Oh, I need to take that steam off. So when you're putting, so I'll just turn this, when we're ironing um, into facing, we do not need the steam. So I'm just going to, I've taken it off, but it's still making steamy noises. And still steaming. I don't know why it's still steaming. It's obviously taking a while to calm itself down. Okay, so that's done. I need to trim off the extra layers. Rosie has just linked, guys, to the fabric that is uh, there. Um, and there are, is some left. So if you want to get your hands on some of this, I think there's some left. Mm. So there we go. No, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Oh dear. Um, line that up. Pop him on. So I think the trickiest thing with the Cora is the pleat. And certainly that's what we get asked the most requests for. So I don't think we're going to get to the pleat today because um, we have to put the facing on, which is quite an unusual step, before we put the pleat in. one guys uh, um, yeah I saw a couple of comments thank you for commenting on my kitchen I'm glad you like it we've done some more videos on that as well um, on, on around the house we've done a little garden one I think is what, yeah have we done a garden one yeah I don't think that's gone up yet so yeah we'll just keep updating with um, various rooms as and when they're ready and the stuff to look at oh thank you Anne matchy matchy this is actually a, a body um, I bought this when I was breastfeeding Jasmine as you can imagine it's easy to breastfeed in but it is a body so it fastens underneath um and uh, then i've got my secret pajama trousers on um which they're not pajamas but they could be <laughs> um and then yeah i've forgotten how much i love the fabric of this sylvia but i quite like wearing it with a stripe i think it looks quite nice doesn't it so, yeah probably wouldn't go out of the house with the matching with the matching headscarf on but why not why not for you guys you won't judge me okay so um i'm trimming this off now i'm trimming off the uh, interfacing another thing that i did at the weekend was with i was with rosie we were making more content for our stitch school so uh, stitch school is our big online learning platform and we were filming some new videos that will help with various elements of the ebook patterns that are out tomorrow and then the, the the stitch school videos will be out later not tomorrow don't panic Rosie <laughs> um, and then the um, and then we also did two new patterns um, that are going to be coming out as well and we're also working on another kind of longer classic course and some other good tutorials. So we did lots of lovely content and it went so well and we realised how easy it was to do with social distancing. Um, so we're now going to be filming for Stitch School for a day every month. That's it, every month, guys, getting you as much content as we can um, so we can get all of your skills set up and keeping you inspired. So, yeah, Stitch School, um, continue with patterns, ebook release and these sew alongs that is the focus of sew over it um at the moment so yeah now right there we go those are done pop them to one side so now oh no i know we're not popping them to one side are we? we've got to mark our circles oh no 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 so let's put those back together again and let's mark the circles. Why is he, he shrunk a little bit shorter. The ebook is out tomorrow, guys. Make sure you're on our mailing list. It will be out on the mailing list first, but it is out tomorrow. After I get off the phone, <laughs> after the phone, as in, after I get off this, I will be um, reading through it for the 11th million time. No. Um, we I just want to check a couple more things. At this point, it's just keeping on checking and tweaking and adding new things. 
um, and uh, yeah, everyone, it's all hands on deck. So yesterday, uh, Molly and I were filming and of lots of the, um, you know, doing kind of an IGTV on how I style it and also the vlog on showing you all the patterns and taking some more photos of me in the patterns. Um, and then Rosie was sorting out all the fabrics that will be going online, so photographing them and making sure they're up online. Alex was prepping our newsletter and all of the kind of promotional stuff. And Nicole was working on still getting that ebook ready um, and making all those final changes. So everyone at So Over is very much ebook focused at the moment. All right, okay, I wasn't talking about what I was doing, was I? Oopsies! Circle at the bottom there. I've just marked through on the um, through on the wrong sides so on the interfacing for both on both pieces, and that's really important because when we come to sew this on the um, facing, we're going to need to specifically stop at those circles. So um, it's important that you have them and you mark them through once you put the interfacing on. Because if you mark them before you put the interfacing on, then you might cover it with the interfacing, and that would be no good. Now, let's just have a look, because I don't know if I marked all my circles on my big pieces. So let's have a look at our big pieces. So here, I've definitely got all my notches. No, I didn't mark that circle. And that's also really important, because that's the circle on the front there, on the centre front neckline. That there shows you, that there, that there shows you, <laughs> that shows you, go northern, um, where to um, put where to stop stitching and things with the pleat. So I'm going to just mark through there, made a hole in the circle, mark through that, and then I'm putting a pin. Oh, let's do this again. Um, and marking here. Okay. Yeah. For some reason, I don't seem to have cut this out wrong sides together, right sides together. So I've just marked it on the right side. It's annoying, I'll have to remark it. Um, but what was so lovely when we were filming the, the Stitch School yesterday was the luxury of having a close-up camera, an overhead, and also the setup like I have here. I mean, really, it just meant that I could just show so much more. Um, and obviously, you know, this is fun, and we do this, you know, for the, um, um, you know, for the kind of community element as well, don't we? So, um it's not always really super clear what I'm doing because it's basically my phone that I'm filming this on. But um, it is uh, nice when you kind of have the luxury. And obviously Stitch School is more about the teaching, less about the waffle. I said to Rosie as we were like getting ready, I was like, you'll have to remember, remind me not to waffle. Because I'm so used to waffling. Oh, is that someone at the door? Please don't be anyone at the door, I'm not ready. I don't want to answer. Hope he hasn't gone mental, so hopefully it's not someone at the door. <laughs> okay, I'm just now, sorry, just marking these um, again because I marked on the wrong side, on the right side. Oh gosh. Just bear with me, guys. Uh, this person is being not relentless. This is like now so many. Lockings. Coming back, guys, coming back. There's another, you seem to be the theme of our sew alongs now that I'm here in my house is Amazon deliveries. <laughs> Don't know what that was for. I'll have a look later. Um, okay, right. So that is now marked on both sides, I believe. Yes. Okay, so that's the front. Then the back. Um, I think I haven't marked the circles. Oh no, I have marked the circles for this back pleat. I think I put a pin in it. So on the back pattern, what we have is a circle here because we've got a pleat at the back so you need to do that so I've marked it through and I think I pinned it so I just need to now with my Frickson pen I just need to mark that on the right on the wrong side as well okay there we 
we go. Fab. Okay. So I think the first thing we're going to do is some stay stitching. I think that's what I'll do first. So, and as you know, I'm not a huge fan of stay stitching, but I am going to do it this time. I'm going to try and do this by the book that we put out, by the booklet. So we need to stay stitch our neckline. So we've got our back neckline. There it is. <laughs> we've got our back neckline, so I'm going to stay stitch that. And then I'm also going to stay stitch the front. And I'm going to use a centimetre seam allowance. So stay stitching is there to help the fabric from stopping fraying. If though, if you've got a super, um, I'm also just going to increase the stitch length. If you've got a super, um, like curved or bias focus, bias kind of cut neckline in that you know it's really hitting um, that, then. Uh, Um, I, I find that stay stitching is not a good idea because it's over handling the fabric and it stretches it. So the one that I'm wearing is, this is the Sylvia blouse. This is just ready to wear. Um, it's not um, a handmade of it top. Yeah, this is the Sylvia. And this is the headscarf that I show you guys how to make. I made a sew along. There's one on the, you can have a look. Um, on our playlist for sew alongs. Okay, so that's the front one that I've done, um, the back one, now I'm gonna do the front. Now this is a little bit on the bias really, so it, I, I am a bit nervous, but it's still okay. So if you are so stay stitching this, if you look at what my hands are doing, I'm doing that where I'm sort of pushing, pushing malarkey. So I'm pushing the fabric up towards the presser foot because if I allow the fabric to stay flat on the machine, what that's gonna do is it's gonna stretch it out. And I do not want it to stretch it out. I've just had a message pop up to say, I'll call you in a minute. So, and it looks like I'm gonna get interrupted again. Obviously I won't take the phone call and leave you all hanging, but every time someone calls me, it cuts out, so sorry guys. Most people though that I speak to do know that I do filming between one and two. So they shouldn't really, but I guess, obviously people forget, don't they? That is now stay stitched as well. Um, I think now what we can do, we've got to do the pleats on the back. We could do that first. Let me just see if I'm going to stick to this order. Do we do the pleat? Yeah, we can do the pleat on the back first. So let's do that. So back piece. We have just stay stitched and we should have little notchy watches. Notchy watches. Um, and so those two notches there are going to go together, the line, like that. So I'm placing it right sides together, and put a pin in there. And then we've got the circle point that we marked. So what I'm going to do is I am going to get that together first before I do anything else. So I'm going to put a pin in through on one side and try and line it up on the other side. It's not a bit like doing a dart really. It's the same technique, you've got to line it up. No, I'm not doing I am not currently lining it up. <laughs> it's not working. Feels like I haven't seen you guys. I know I'm not seeing you. <laughs> We're chatting. You're seeing me, but unfortunately it's not um double sided, is it? <laughs> Both sided. Well, I, I don't know what the, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. But I feel like it's been so long. So I was so used to doing them every day, which was wonderful, but unfortunately just not manageable for me to do now. Um, it just feels like it's ages since I last did this. I missed you all. I missed my so alongs. Okay, I'm gonna get a ruler. I'm gonna ruler this. So basically I've lined up that and I've lined up that, that I, that I need to now pin we're going to stitch down there. Um, just looking, sorry, I don't know where I've got a ruler. 
Wait a second. Sorry guys, I'm just looking this up. Yeah. Um, what can I use as a ruler? A book. I will eventually get myself sorted, guys, so that I have everything I need here. But I'm still at the stage, it hasn't actually been that long, really, has it? Cookbook. Guys? Uh, yeah, here we go. I don't need this anymore. Quick and easy weaning. <laughs> I need to just put my hooks up and like get all my stuff. I need to do that. But every time I go to the shop, there seems to be more important things to do at the shop than get all my sewing stuff out of there. I get sort of sidetracked. There's so much stuff going on. But yeah, eventually I'll get sorted. I'm just moving these pins out of the way from my book. Okay, line that up. Where's my pen? There we go. So and now I'm just gonna mark that. So I've got a stitch line, and then I'm gonna be very careful and not let anything move and just quickly pin along that stitch line. go that's now pinned oops so take that pin out so now what we're going to do guys is stitch the pleat in place so I'm going to do a little reverse at the beginning why am I on stitch number three accidentally pressed the wrong stitch be up that what was that that was going to be a funny zigzag oh dear we need a straight stitch so now i'm going to follow that line that i've just done done okay okay so we're now going to press this in like so over there we've got to form my box pleat you can't really see what i'm doing can you sorry got to basically get the what well, I had already actually folded this here so we've got the um, mark here and um, sorry the fold point there the center back fold line and then I'm just going to put that pin over I'm sort of flattening it can you see let's see <laughs> Dear. what am I doing there we go Let's see if that works can you see more now I can't really get the right angle can I no 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 <clears throat> sorry guys can't show you I'll just have to show you once I've finished it um so that pin there is on the fold there and I'm just going to line that pin up like that to create the pleat and then I'm going to make sure that I pin either side 
They look so. Um, fab. And then we need to press that in place. But I'm, what I'm going to first do is machine tack across the top there. So, like that. Okay? Make sure that it's within the center, sort of within this, this um, stay stitching. So now, on Mr. Iron, we are going to press it. Let's see if I can get this in into... Uh, 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 lock myself in. There we go. And then you can see what I'm doing. So now we press this in place. So we've got to press it in into kind of pleaty shape into this. So continually um, pressing that strip or... I don't know, it's like a box pleat really isn't it we're pressing that continually down like that okay and so what that does is from this side oh it looks so lovely let's look at it from here you see it really pretty pleat there at the back so that's that done we do need to do those side seams and I think we do hem as well. So let me just check whether we are doing that. Sorry, guys. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, we haven't done the overlocking yet, have we? Side seams are following the angles and the hems. Okay, fine. So what we're going to do now, we've got to pleat our pleat. We're going to do our side seams. So we're going to come along here and then we've got the angle that we need to include there the little slit and then down and around okay so mr overlocker needs to segue in and put this out move the sewing machine out the way oh goodness goodness me it's really funny guys so in this new house i've got this is just all open plan. So I'm sitting in kind of like the dining room. In fact, I'll just quickly show you. So that's out to the garden there. My little hanging pants and parrots. And then this is like where I am filming. I'm facing, so there's my kitchen there. And there's my under, stop, um, under stairs cupboard doors. And there's my like glass door that goes out to the hallway, out the front door and then upstairs as well. And then behind me, Living room's really not that finished yet, but there's my front window, bay window, my flowers. Oh, Poppy's on the sofa. There's Coco. Um, oh, and now Poppy's going for Coco. Um, anyway, I've got these flowers that I had at my other house. Um, and uh, all the ones in the, in the front window and the window boxes. And I, my neighbour had them for me whilst I didn't have anywhere to live. And so she's been watering them and she looked after them so well. And so, Poppy, shh. Anyway, so now I've got these beautiful, beautiful, lots of pink geraniums, some hydrangeas, all sorts of things. It looks like, like they're just so big, so many big flowers. Because we've also got pots all on the floor outside. And literally, I just see people walk past and they actually stop. They stop and look, and I was out there watering them one night and someone, I caught someone was out there, she's like, oh, I'm sorry. I was like, it's fine. She's like, please appreciate the flowers. That's what they're there for. And uh, she's like, I just was like, I just never seen so many pink flowers. I was like, oh, well, I hope they're brightening your day because they, they brighten my day every day. She's like, oh my goodness, yes. I've now decided that I'm going to take, when she's walking back from work, she's going to walk past this house every time so she can see the flowers. So, yeah. Right, what are we doing? Back to the sewing. We are doing our side seams and our hems. So I've got Mr. Overlocker here. There we go. Poppy is barking at a bumblebee. Coco is hiding under a chair from the bumblebee and Poppy. Um, why do I keep getting confused with what's what on this top? There we go. Found it. Very confused. Okay, so we're just doing the side seams and the hem, and we can do that all in one continuous. 
I believe that. Brightening people's day in whatever way you can. So of course now I'm a bit trying, I'm like, oh gosh, I have to make sure I have to make sure that they're always looking up on it. But to go and de-head my geraniums. But yeah, and also what I really love is every time we come home, Jazzy and I. Um, yeah, uh, when we come home from wherever we've been, um, so from nursery or whatever, she's uh, she's like, Mummy, isn't it lovely to have our flowers back? I'm like, yes, Jasmine. I mean, she's literally said that ten times, but it's just as fabulous every time she said it. That girl is going to love flowers. <laughs> she hasn't really got us an excuse. I'm glad she's appreciating them already. So, um, at the angles, as we're going around this with a single layer, so we're just doing a single layer, so it's important that we're not shaving off any of the seam allowance, but also that we're pivoting at these angled corners around the hem. My favourite thing to do at the moment is when Jazzy is with me, is at the end of the day, is going out and watering all the plants with her. I mean, I just... Absolutely love doing that. I mean, granted, she probably waters the same plant about five times. <laughs> you know, it's just a nice little routine that we've got into. It's a nice way to end the day. Okay, we're pivoting down across there on this next one. And then a pivot again along the next one. So when I was designing the core of top, these pivot points um, are, pivot, these sorry, these little pleat, um, angled edges are kind of to line and sort of to tie in with the pleat that's happening at the front. So to me, because that's quite a kind of angular pleat, isn't it? The, the way that we top stitch it so well. Poppy, stop licking the sofa. The licking of the velvet continues on the sofa. I literally am not gonna have a nice sofa soon. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so when we, um, I wanted to make sure that that design element there carries through. And so for me, a rounded slits wouldn't have worked. They needed to be angular to kind of try and add in with a sort of triangular and angled neckline pleat. I don't think I articulated that one. When I finish this and you can see, you'll see what I mean. Maybe it ties in nicely. Okay, so that's the back done, and we need to do the same to the front as well. Okay. So there we go. So from, from the side seam, so, and also really from just that little bit of underarm curve. pivoting again so when they pivot by the way on a uh, overlocker you don't have to always have the needle in I don't think you can just lift up and just just be careful you don't sort of pull anything you can just lift up and pivot round without the needle in still gives you a, a neatish pivot is now the back and the front overlocked. Let's move you back. We'll get that angle. There we go. And I'm now going to, we're now going to look at the side seam, so the shoulder seams. So we're now going to join the shoulder seams. Then we put the facing on. And then once the facing is on, then you can start to look at the pleat. But we're not going to do the pleat today. So we're hoping what we'll do is we'll get to the point where we've got um, the facing on. 
That's the aim for today. Oh, it's lovely and sunny outside. I've also, um, I think my neighbours, <laughs> my neighbours from outside will probably think that uh, Heathrow Airport has moved to my garden because the amount of solar lights I have that come on at about 9.30 now, it's just like flash, 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 flash. It's like a runway, a higgledy piggledy runway in my garden. Oh my goodness though, it gives me so much pleasure. I, I get so excited, I have to like make sure that I don't go to bed too early because obviously it gets light now, doesn't it? Um, so it stays light for longer. And uh, so the fairy lights don't come on till half nine. And last night I was so tired, I really wanted to go to bed at half like early. I was oh, I can't go to bed. I haven't seen my lights come on in the cot. Let's go watch my Heathrow Airport light up. The runway. Okay, so we have got uh, here right sides together with the shoulder seams. So I'm basically lining up at the neckline, lining up at the bottom of the uh, sleeve, which is essentially like a grown on sleeve, really. It's not a sleeve. You know what I mean? But it's sort of the shoulder seam that goes into the sleeve, it's like a drop kimono really kimono sleeve it's like this but without the extra bit on so there's a notch uh, there to help you line up a little balance notch i should say i'm making a size eight for this so generally wear sew over at size eight on top for tops and for dresses um or trousers and more of a well it depends if it's a flared skirt because i'm more of a 10 look who's come to say hi coco 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 What's this? Oh no, Poppy's not going to be happy. What's this? Yep, I could definitely see my house from space. <laughs> sure. Coco, don't sleep on there. Come here, come and say hi. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. What's this? What's this? Huh? What's this? She's filthy, you can't say, well, let's turn it so you can see her. Where is she? There. She's really grubby, because she just lies in the uh, the dirt, like the soil, and it's so dry at the moment, because it's been so dry here. Coco! Hmm. Not interested today, is she? Not interested in, in her fame today. Oh, now you want to come in, do you? Don't sit on my laptop. Um, okay, so that's one shoulder seam. Let's do the other one. Thank you, Anne. Yes, my daughter. I'm very pleased with it. I did uh, spend... Um, so there were lots of things in the house that I couldn't afford to do, so we sort of just did what we could with what we had. And actually, I was very lucky that the door to into um, the living room from the hallway it's that panel glass door, which I love, and so I've made a feature of it by painting it uh, teal. But this was like, a the door there was like a PVC door, um, and wasn't very nice. And it was sort of like, it, kind of like a really narrow one door, and then it sort of had a funny window. And so I spent money on getting those doors made. And I found a place that was quite reasonable, actually. But it was literally the best money I've spent on this place, because when I, especially at the moment, and obviously it being summer, I sit, in this room whether i'm working or where i'll sit down there from watching television and i the patio doors are just open and it's just it's lovely and then i've got this um pergola kind of little mini pergola that i had built which is just some kind of strips of wood really it's very basic and so i've got all my hanging plants and lights and parrots and all sorts okay this is not lining up i think we've got some stretching here so i'm just going to stop waffling and focus on that I think we need to ease this in on this side for whatever reason it's stretched. Coco's now found herself here. Yeah, I don't know why that's stretched, but it did stretch a bit. Oh well. She's now jumped off, she's seen a fly. <laughs> right, so that is the shoulder, those are the shoulder seams. So let's stitch those in. Now I haven't, I don't think I've talked about seam allowance yet, have we? No, we've not sewn anything, um, a regular seam yet. So the seam allowance, 
it's not really much, it's not like it's going to be a surprise, guys. The seam allowance is exactly what I said it would be, um, what it is on all our patterns, it's 1.5. Yeah, I thought it might be interesting to see that, because I know when I watch people on um, YouTube and things, I, it's like, oh, what can they see? What's that room like? So it's quite nice to see the context. So yeah, we have sort of done like little room tours a little bit and we'll continue to do them. But I think then I think it'd be nice just to do the whole thing so you get the feeling of the space. There we go, we're on, we're on, we're on. Okay, so centimetre and a half seam allowance, five eighths of an inch, that's what we're doing. washer dryer in the kitchen what does that amaze you Lorianne? what do you guys have in the states do you not have that oh in all english kitchens not most of them unless you've got a big house you have your washing machine and your dryer in the kitchen because we don't have big houses here so we have to kind of be clever with our spaces uh separate utility room yeah that's quite so my mum and dad have only just like that. Um, we just don't have that space. So that's why in my last house, that utility room, and I think I did say, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. I've got a utility room. Because we just don't have that in this country usually. Certainly not in London, because we just don't have the space. Space is such a premium. It's like living in New York, you know, very few New Yorkers will have a utility room, I imagine. Certainly not ones that live in Manhattan. Um, so here, if we had a utility room, it would be essentially like, um, yeah, homes under the hammer. Yeah, that gives you a sense probably, doesn't it? But it'd be like what, you know, it'd be like a whole other bedroom, which would cost over a hundred thousand pounds easily to have another bedroom, um, in London. So for that, you put your washing machine in your kitchen. But actually, I have to say, given my lifestyle at the moment and being a single mum half of the time and obviously being dad, this space works so well for Jazzy and I because I can hear the washing machine. Um, you can hear the washing machine um, when it's finished. It reminds me to put them in the tumble dryer when it's on. I can take the washing outside just there. I can see Jazzy playing, you know, in the front part of this room. You know, she can be eating here and I can get up to the kitchen. Like, the whole thing just makes it easier for us. And the animals are just around us all the time. Well, that's interesting. In Denmark, you have them in the bathroom. Hmm. Yes, exactly. I think so. Because then you can, yeah, take it out. So, when in my last house, the utility room was in the upstairs. And I know a lot of people were like, that's a bad idea, that's a bad idea. But I was like, yeah, but... I don't have space for it downstairs and it's but and I don't need a massive spare room for when mum and dad come to stay. So but it was annoying in that you then like you know, yeah, the stuff was upstairs but in in the summer. But um here it's much easier because like you say you can just take it straight out. the interesting chats we do guys we put the world to right when it comes to our sew alongs don't we washing machines spaces tumble dryer it's nice though isn't it it's just like chatting to a friend on the phone and i sometimes think matt used to say i just don't understand you just talk about like i don't really know what you talk about with your with your friends on the phone i was like well we don't sit there and talk politics we just talk about i don't know whatever nice it's like yeah i don't understand it <laughs> okay so um we're gonna trim those off and then we're gonna overlock we're gonna overlock those seam allowances together and press them towards the back okay move that out the way slide him in I don't think I've sent, I've taken a photo, I'm really sorry. I feel a little bit bad that I've, I guess it's because of the ebook and various, well, there's been a lot on, hasn't there? But 
I haven't taken a proper photo of my um, Lizzie skirt that I made last week, which is really pretty. I haven't worn it yet, actually, because the weather's been cooler. But And I also haven't taken a photo of my other, of my uh, Giselle. So sorry about that, guys. But um, I haven't forgotten. It's so unlikely you're going to see it up on the sofa side for a while, because... Um, we're all about the ebook at the moment, so. But once that's calmed down, we'll get them up there. Mm -hmm. I haven't been trimming my overlocking threads actually. There we go. Let's do a bit of a tidy up of these threads. So, and then we'll press them towards the back and then we'll move on to the facing. Yep, that's why I love colour. It's there to brighten up the moods. <laughs> yeah, stacked washer dryer. That I definitely looked into that for here as well. That's something we do. If you look on uh, Pinterest, there's like so many things of like clever ideas on how to, where to put your washing machine and dryer. Yeah, stacking them. But tumble dryer, Rosie, do you have a tumble dryer? Most people don't have a tumble dryer in London. That's also a luxury because they don't have the space for it. And you can get those machines that do the two, but they're not brilliant. Ah, well, there we go. And some people don't even have washing machines. Yeah. No tumble dryer. Rosie doesn't have a tumble dryer, guys. London living. Rosie, you can come round and use my tumble dryer if you ever want. <laughs> but it, the only thing with tumble dryers, it, it, you know, it's really bad for energy consumption, isn't it? But I have to say, having a small child, it saves... If I think if, uh, if I didn't have a tumble dryer, my house would permanently look like a laundry. The whole of the house. Especially in the winter. So, it's good for sheets and towels. Oh, yeah, yeah, you've only, yeah, you've got your garden though. You can have a dress, a, a, a washing line now, can't you, Rosie? Which is nice. Where am I in this garment? There we go. We're now pressing this towards the back. But yeah, a lot of people in London, you don't have gardens. And then you've just got to dry everything inside. But there is an amazing, sorry... <laughs> The wonderful chat of laundry continues. There's an amazing thing at Lakeland. So Lakeland is like a, I don't really know what you would call it. It's not a hardware shop, but it's like an, a domestic. So it sells like all sorts of things for irons and cat, what drying things and baking stuff and like a house shop, but not pretty stuff. It's like practical stuff. And like basically they have these amazing um, dryers that you plug in um, and... Uh, they use about the same energy as a light bulb, and so you can leave them on over whilst you're not there. Um, a bit like a slow cooker, it really doesn't use that much energy, and so it's not high risk for accidents. And it's, uh, yeah, it's like, it's like a kind of almost like a little climbing frame in a way, and it dries your clothes. So, um, as in so much more quickly than, say, a regular clothes horse. Okay, so I think we're at that point where we can try it on. It looks like a beach cover-up at the moment, doesn't it? Pass me a cocktail, a little pina colada. Oh, I miss pina coladas so much. That's what you have on holiday, isn't it? No, I'm going, I'm not going to be going, we're not going on a holiday this year, are we? Any of us. So we're, no, I'm going to make pina coladas. I've got a pineapple up there. That's it, I've decided. If, I, if the beach, I can't go to the beach, I shall bring the beach to me. Okay. That's the, t that's the top there. So, um, we are now going to join the facings with the shoulder seams. Sorry, not the face, the facings, the back facing and the front facing. Um, now, I just want to check that, which way this is going to go, because I don't want to get these on the wrong way round. I do believe it is that way.
Yeah, beach. Mm. Well, any of you... Oh, Coco's come back up. Any of you who live by beaches? Do you want to make us jealous? Who lives by a beach? Okay. Can we see? Oh, there we go. This is what I'm doing, guys. I'm going to pin here and here. I should just start to do that, shouldn't I? And then you can see what I'm doing. Oh, Anne lives by a beach. Where around do you live? Or is it Anna? Sorry. Oh, someone's got a pond. <laughs> ah, Isle of Wight. Someone's in the Isle of Wight. Oh, well, that's lovely. You've got the beach near you. Yeah. Fab. Banff in Scotland. Yes, you do. That's true. Oh, lovely. Someone's 10 minutes away. Someone's got lives by Virginia, Virginia Beach. Oh, Cape Cod. Oh, oh I want to go back to Cape Cod. Unfortunately, I've got bad memories of Cape Cod because I had a terrible um, morning sickness there. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, we, we were, went to, to America, um, the US, when I was just pregnant with Jasmine. Oh, wow, Lorianne, look at you. Oh, lovely. You can see the marina. Oh, guys. Okay. Well, lucky you being by the beach. Send me some beach vibe. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so we went to, on a tour we went to, where did we start off? We started off, we did New York, we did uh, Philadelphia, Washington, and then we were doing Cape Cod, and then we were going to do the Catskills. I, by the time we got to Cape Cod, I was so ill, I couldn't even move. I was just like, I was like, Matt, I'm miserable. Let Get us out of here. So we changed the flights. It was awful. It's a bit of a drama because we changed the flights to, to get out there early. So we're just pinning guys here and we're going to stitch that with a centimetre and a half seam allowance, 1.5 centimetres, 5 eighths of an inch. Um, and uh, yeah, so we got the flight um, and I, I was being like really badly sick and I... <laughs> looked awful got on the flight and uh started and the moment i got on the flight i think they saw me come on and they're like oh my gosh she looks like death um and i was like i'm pregnant you know but i guess they couldn't vouch for that um and uh i said look you know i was being sick before they even took off and suddenly the um the head su desk came up and said i'm sorry but the captain won't fly with you for eight hours it's too high risk um, and I said, it's because I'm pregnant. He's like, yeah, well, that's why we won't fly with you because, if, you know, if you've got that bad morning sickness. I was like, well, how am I going to get home? It's not going to stop. Anyway, so we then went, we got off the plane and we were those annoying people that had to get off the plane and everyone had to wait for our, our luggage to be taken off the plane. We went to a uh, hotel in the airport. We ended up staying there two nights. I got worse and worse and worse to the point that... Um, I then fainted, I was so poorly. So Matt then told the, you know, said, oh, can we get a doctor to the, to the room? But the hotel was so worried we were gonna sue. So they got an ambulance, far too dramatic anyway. And then I got ambulance out, we were for a Newark airport, ambulance to the hospital. And the guys in the ambulance, I can't do an, a, an, an accent. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to try, but um, it's, New, it's New Jersey, isn't it, Newark? Is that right? Anyway. And he was like, oh, yeah, normally... No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> it's embarrassing to anyone who's watching this who's American. And they were like, normally we're used to stabbings and shootings, so this is a breeze. Thanks for this. I was like, oh, my goodness, this is so embarrassing. Fortunately, we had insurance, but, you know. I think that whole thing would have... It cost $2,000 um, being taken in an ambulance. It felt completely, like, a waste of money, but anyway. Um, and, yeah, and then they basically put me on one of these drips where they, like intravenously they give you some anti-sickness thing and the doctor literally said to me he's like okay you've got about eight to ten hours before this medication works well it wears off and then all you know whilst you know you need to get yourself on a plane and as long as once you've taken off they're not going to grant you know they're flying over the atlantic they're not going to stop the plane so literally matt was like okay i'll sort it out so he got us on another flight Matt did my makeup. I looked so awful. Matt put some makeup on me so I didn't look so awful. And kind of like I held on to Matt and then I had like a wheelie case thing that I had like for like a hand luggage. And I used that as like a, hat, a walking stick. Because I mean, I hadn't eaten for days. I felt awful. 
literally got onto the plane and like Matt was like, all you need to do, Lisa, is just try not to be sick until we've taken off. And literally after about 10 minutes after taking off, I was like, I was like, I'm, I've made it though, I'm in the air. And like, we just said, oh no, she just gets travel sickness and didn't tell anyone I was pregnant. What a palaver. So Cape Cod, I'd like to go back to because I'm scarred by that place at the moment, by my memory of that experience. But we did manage, I did remember we went to look at the seals. We did manage that. Okay. So, um, we are going to press those seams open um on the facing how are we doing for time actually oh we're all, an hour okay i think it's fine guys if we don't um we can start to pin this on and you can sew this um on before next week but let's pin it together okay so mm -hmm. So we have got, um, oh, <laughs> slow me in. I want to do loads of the states, I really do. I want to go to Montana, I'd love to go to Oregon, I'd love to go do some more California, I'd love to do some of the South, I'd love to go to New Orleans, oi, more of Florida, yeah. If I could just take six months off and do a bit of a trip. So right sides together. I've lined up my um, seams here on the um, back um, and um, um, and then, yeah, I've lined up the seams on the back and then all the way I'm going to line up that back there, centre back with the pleat there and then I'm going to pin down. Now this is when we're going to use the circle that is on this, not the circle that is on this. Okay, the circle that is on, they shouldn't align, these are different circles, circles for different things. The circle on the facing is there to show us where to stop sewing this bit. The circle on the, um, on the, fr on the front pleat here is, uh, is for when we're, sh we're showing the, the, when we're sewing, sewing the pleat. So let's just pin this bit first. Oh, thanks, Sal, getting all these uh, invitations to different places. I used to live in Sydney. When I was 18, 19, I lived there for four, four months, worked in the city in a cafe and lived in Bondi Beach, like all the British backpackers. Um, and someone, I think I also saw a comment about my, my um, morning sickness. Yeah, um, I don't think, I can't remember if it was ever diagnosed with that. I think it was sort of, yeah, it was, but I didn't go, end up going back to hospital again. It got better. I stopped, I just would wake up, I mean, I don't think I could work for, I remember being off work for a few weeks. So I was so weak and poorly. And then it went down to just being sick in the mornings. And I think by about 16, 17 weeks, I'd stopped being sick. But yeah, not pleasant. But all I, I didn't really care. All I knew is that morning sickness was a sign of a, preg, of a healthy pregnancy. So it kind of, that's helped me get through it in a way. Right, we've got a notch there on the neckline to help us get that right because we'll find that the facing, because it's been stabilised, that that will, um, might, you might need to ease the neckline in, um, into the facing. Okay, so it looks like this. Okay, so what you're going to do, guys, is you're going to sew it from the centre back you're going to sew from the centre back down one side and stop at the point. And then sew from the centre back on the other side and stop at the point. So that way you've got the direction on each. So don't do it like that because it will drag. Um, it's much better to do it like that and down. Um, so one side and then the other side. Um, the, centi this, the centimetre allowance, the seam allowance is 1.5 centimetres for this neckline. So um, that will, you'll see that when you come back down to that circle there, but it is five eighths an inch or centimetre and a half. And then once you've done that, well, let's get to that point. Then tomorrow, not tomorrow, Thursday, when we're back, we can understitch this, finish that. I think actually I was meant to overlock the edge of this, which I haven't done, but we can do that together. It's quite a big facing, so it's easy to do that when the facing's attached. Um, 
and then we'll do the pleat and then we'll do our side seams and things. I reckon we can finish it because I faffed around in tight at the beginning of this one. And then we had the Amazon, then we had the phone calls, then we had the chat about laundry, morning sickness. What will we discuss on Thursday? Who knows? Well, thank you so much for joining me and thank you to Rosie for answering all the proper questions um, and technical questions. We'll be back on Thursday. Um, do make sure you sign up to our mailing list, guys, and, or, and keep an eye on our social media because tomorrow we will be um, launching our ebook, as I said. Link to our coffee page for donations is, co is in the description box and also to the patterns, if, the core pattern if you're watching it and also what we've got coming up as well. Please do give thumbs up if you liked it and if you haven't subscribed to our channel, do that. And I'll see you all on Thursday, bye. Oh, also before I go, on Wednesday, tomorrow, I will also do the Sew and Be Live. I usually tell you about that, don't I, on the Wednesday. So I will be doing that tomorrow um, on the show over at um, Instagram. So, yeah. See you. Bye.